This video will cover the Plinko templates. We will go over the Plinko template files one at a time and tell what each property does. We will begin with the Plinko Quick Start, which will then be used to generate a CSP containing all the other template configurations, and then go over those, the DBML template, Entities template, and Queries template, respectively. These templates we'll be going over are from Plinko 4.0. So let's go over the Quick Start's properties. First, we select the source database we want to generate from Pet Shop. Now that's filled in all the rest of the properties, but the point of this video is to go over those, so let's continue. In the solution properties set, we can choose what language we would like to generate for. Plinko is available in both C Sharp and Visual Basic. We'll use C Sharp for this example. Next, we can specify whether or not Plinko should launch the generated Visual Studio solution when we're done. We'll say true. The location property allows us to specify where we want to generate the quick start to. By default, it's going to use my documents slash codesmith slash templates slash Plinko slash your solution name. And in this case, the solution name is going to be, by default, the name of the database. Now, in our data project properties, we can select whether or not we would like to copy templates to a local folder. And that would copy all of Plinko's templates into a local directory underneath where the quick start is generated. Otherwise, the CSP is going to be configured to use relative paths back to the templates in the sample directory. So we'll say false because we don't need to copy all of those for this demonstration. Next, we specify the data project's name. Now, the solution is going to generate three different projects, a data project, interface project, and test project. So we're going to specify their names. In this case, we're going to say the data project should be petshop.data. And after that, we choose our query pattern. And there are two options here, the query extensions, which we have a complete Plinko feature video for, or the manager classes. Now, the manager classes are a little bit different than the query extensions. Instead of using chainable and composable methods, they're just going to provide you with a pre-built list of all the unique ways to get back rows. So managers do take advantage of compiled queries, but they lose out on the customization and versatility of the query extensions. So we'll stick with the query extensions for this example. And by the way, the generated CSP, if we choose query extensions, will include a reference to the queries Codesmith template. However, if we choose managers, it will include a reference to the managers.cst. So our next property set for the interface project, we can specify if we want to include data services or not. We can specify the interface project name, and then we can choose the project type. Now, there's three options here. None to generate no interface project, dynamic web app to generate a dynamic web application, or dynamic data web site to generate a dynamic data website. And the difference between those two are just which Visual Studio project you would prefer to have generated. And in our last property set for the test project, we have a boolean to include whether or not we want the test project generated and the test project name. So now that we've gone over those, let's generate them. So now let's open up the CSP and look at the other template properties. As you can see, the QuickStar has generated for us three different templates. Let's go through those one at a time, starting with the DBML template. First, in our database property set, we have the clean expression. And this series of strings is going to get turned into regular expressions and run against all table names, view names, and column names. And wherever there is a match, it is going to be removed from the string. So by default, it's going to remove all prefixes that have a word followed by an underscore. The next property is the enum list, and this is going to be used as regular expression as well, and it will be used to match enum tables so that Plinko can generate enums. And next is our ignore list, and this will also be turned into regular expressions and then run against all the table names, and wherever any of these matches a table name, that table will be ignored, and Plinko will not generate anything for it. Next we have include functions, a boolean whether or not we should include functions, include views, and again a boolean whether or not we should include views, and the source database property. We configured this in the quick start, so that value got copied into here, but it's just saying we're going to generate this dbml from Pet Shop. Next we have our class property set, which starts off with the context namespace. And this is the namespace that your data context object will be created inside of. Then we specify the entity base class, so in this case all entities will be inheriting from link entity base. You could modify this to be another class that inherits link entity base, giving you more inheritance in your entities. Next we have the entity namespace, so what namespace should all the entities be generated in? And then we have the include delete on null. This is an attribute inside of the DBML for association types. If set to true, then whenever you set an association on an entity to null, the associated record will be deleted. So for safety's sake, this defaults to false, but if you wanted to delete records solely by turning their association to null, you would set that to true. Next, we have another entity, I'm sorry, property set inside of the class property set. And this is for naming conventions. The first property of association naming is asking what you would like to name your one-to-many associations. So do you want them to just be the name 
be plural or have a suffix of list. So an example would be a person, if associated one to many with dog, would be person.dog if none, person.dogs if plural, and person.dog list if list suffix was chosen. And then the next two are used to help Plinko name your entities, and we'll do these in reverse order. Table naming is specified as singular if you name your table singular, so if your person table is just named person. Plural if you name your person table people, or mixed if there's no consistent naming convention in your database. Then entity naming is what you would like to name your entities. So do you want that people table to become person, the entity? Do you want that person table to become people, the entity, if plural, or preserve if you just want to preserve whatever the database is doing? By setting these two values, you give Plinko the best chance to properly name your entities. So then beneath that, we have the enum property set. And that just has two different strings used for regular expressions. And these two values just get used to identify what column is the name column for your enum and what column is the description column for your enum. And the last property set is for mapping, which you specify the DVML file. And that's going to be read in for Plinko to sync with or written out when created or after done synchronization. And then there's a property called user associations. If you add any custom associations to your DBML, then you must specify them here so they don't get destroyed during regeneration. And that covers all the properties in the DBML CST. Now let's look at the entities CST. And again, we're going to walk through all the properties. So the first thing you do is specify the mapping where your DBML file is located. This is the same DBML file we specified where to write out in the DBML CST. Uh, the entities do not require a database connection. They only need the DBML to generate. And then we have our class property set. And the first thing in there is enable auditing. And that's just by default. Do you want your entities to have auditing enabled or disabled? You specify the base directory because these are going to be generated out of a CSP in the Visual Studio solution. You want to tell Plinko where to generate your data context files. And you do that with a relative path here. You can specify a connection string to be put into your data context as the default connection string if Link to SQL can't find a connection string in your app config. You have to specify what framework you're running, either 3.5 or 3.5 SP1, because there are some differences. Plinko needs to know what to generate for. And then we have Boolean for including data contract attributes, a Boolean for including data rules attributes, and that's for the Plinko rules engine, a Boolean for including data services, which is both attributes and interfaces. And then we have a Boolean for including XML serialization, and this is actually an advanced form of XML serialization. Um, the entities will still include the to XML and from XML that Plinko offers by default. Then these next two properties are for interface classes. Now by default, Plinko is not generating interface classes, but if you want Plinko to generate an interface for every one of your business entities, you just need to specify a namespace here, and it will know to generate those. Then if you do specify that namespace, we suggest you specify a directory so it knows where to put those files. So Plinko can generate interfaces for your entities if you want that. The next property here is for the output directory, and this is telling Plinko where to generate your entities to. So by default, it's going to put them all into an entities folder. And then there's a views directory saying where to put all your generated views. But this is not only for your generated views. This is also for your generated object types that come off your stored procedures as well. And the last property is the association naming suffix. We already specified one of these for one-to-many in the DBML CST. This is for many-to-many, -many, saying how you would like those associations named. And again, it's the same options, list suffix, plural, or none. And that's all the properties in the entities CST. Now look at the last, excuse me, now let's look at the last template in our set, queries.cst. So this is a relatively simple template. You have to give it the source database as well as the DBML file as it's going to need both in order to get all the information to generate. And there's only a couple of query properties you need to set. First of all, you need to set the folder so it knows where to output all of your query extensions. And you've specified the prefixes for the by methods as well as the unique result by methods. And then specify the suffix for when you're getting by the primary key. And that's all it takes to generate your query extensions. Whew, and that finally concludes this video over the Plinko templates. We hope you didn't find it to be too long or too dry. To watch additional Plinko videos, please visit us at Plinko.com. My name is Tom DuPont. Thank you for using Plinko.